Good morning. Welcome to SunUp. January 1st of 2011, new regulations take effect here in the state regarding breeding bulls. Those state that any bulls sold for breeding purposes must be tested for trichomoniasis. So we thought we'd take a moment this morning to examine this disease and what it's all about. To start with, our Glenn Selk is here with Extension Veterinarian D.L. Stepp. For many years, we thought about trichomoniasis as a disease that basically only occurred in the mountain states and, and western United States, those areas that had large areas of government land where there's multiple herds grazing the same ranges during the summertime. That's no longer the case. We have trichomoniasis in herds in Oklahoma and other midwestern states. I think today it's important that we learn more about the disease and how we might go about trying to prevent it coming into our herd. And we're going to ask D.L. Stepp to tell us more about how does this, this disease actually take place in cattle? What causes it? How's it spread? Yeah. Well, the cause of trichomoniasis in cattle um, is caused by a microscopic protozoal parasite that basically lives and colonizes the reproductive tract of cattle. Um, it is transmitted uh, by venereal contact or sexually transmitted disease when an infected bull that's chronically infected breeds a susceptible cow. Uh, the cow will develop the disease, the organism will colonize her reproductive tract, and even though she will generally conceive, uh, with that breeding, uh, the inflammation and the reproduction of the organism itself will cause the cow to abort and then she has to clean up the infection from a reproductive tract and then she can come back into estrus or heat and become bred again. Okay, so what's uh, occurring here is that we may actually have a situation where we have a lowered calf crop percentage if we have a confined calving and breeding season exactly. or we have a very extended calving or breeding season. So if, if that's the case, how's a producer find out if they have this disease in their herd? Yes, you're exactly right, Dr. Selk, that where um, the, the main thing on a very defined calving season uh, or breeding season and hence calving season, the, one of the most important thing for the farmer or rancher to do is have their uh, cows uh, pregnancy checked or checked for pregnancy. And what will happen at that particular time, there will be many cows that will be open. Uh, even up to 50% of the cows will be open even though the bulls may have been tested prior to breeding and found to be satisfactory uh, potential breeders. Uh, in the situation in which there's um, uh, the bulls are turned out for a long period of time, what will generally happen, those cows can come back uh, once they clear the infection. Uh, they can be bred. However, it will extend the calving season and it's not uncommon instead of a cow having a calf every 12 months, she may actually have a calf every 18 months or so. So it extends it and it's very huge economic hit, either 50% of the calf crop or an extended calving uh, season for that particular producer. Is there any treatment for trichomoniasis? Yeah. Unfortunately, we do not have a treatment for this particular disease. Now, one thing that's kind of important that, that I think we ought to bring up, Dr. Selk, is that uh, once a cow develops the infection uh, and causes the abortion almost all the time, uh, she can clear the infection, come back into estrus or heat, and a bull can breed her. Uh, she will go ahead and carry that calf or that embryo to calving and deliver a calf. The problem is a lot of times farmers and ranchers believe that if they recover from the infection they'll have uh, immunity, long-lasting immunity. This is a very unique disease in which that is not the case. Uh, if a cow develops the disease, uh, has um, the consequences of that, uh, meaning abortion, and comes back in and gets bred, uh, after she has a calf the following year, she's susceptible again to reinfection. And that's one of the challenges with this disease is that there can be a producer may not even realize that it's in their herd and they can have a chronically infected bull and he can go ahead and breed cattle and this disease just perpetuates on year after year or season after season. Well, it sounds like to me if there's no treatment for the disease, prevention is our best option and somehow we've got to make sure that we're not bringing the disease into the herd 
and therefore how, how we might go about yes. best doing that. You are absolutely correct about that. Prevention is the key with this disease. One of the most important things is to bring in, you could uh, bring in virgin bulls. In other words, bulls that have never uh, bred a female before. If they've never bred a female, they've never come in contact with a potentially infected animal and therefore acquired the disease. So that's one way of doing that. Another way is bringing in bulls that may be more mature. The disease also, I want to make just a real quick point about it, uh, it's generally your older bulls that develop the chronic infection. Uh, so the older the bull that's bred that infection, it's called the crypts inside the male reproductive tract that the organism likes to reside and colonize and reproduce. So an uh, older bull uh, needs to be tested negative prior to coming into a herd. Well, I think that we get an idea that having either virgin bulls that have never bred cows before or bulls that have been tested and found to be negative for the disease is the way to go about as we move bulls from one herd to the other in order to prevent bringing disease into our herd. And thanks to Dr. D.L. Stepp for helping us better understand trichomoniasis.